Hey guys, Pro here at VIP Outdoors, and today I want to go over my three favorite setups when trolling for Spring Chinook on the Columbia River. So check this out, man. Let's get started. Very basic, guys. When I'm thinking about Columbia River Spring Chinook, I think simple is easy. I start with the simplest presentation possible, and then I start to put a little more gear in the water as the water warms up, the fish become more comfortable. Uh, but at the very beginning of the season, when that water is nice and cold, this setup right here is exactly what I start with, okay? i give you a quick little rundown. <clears throat> I use 65 pound braid for absolutely every salmon fishery that I do. Uh, I think it's absolutely just fine. I don't think you need to go any thinner than that. I'm struggling a little bit, man. I'm like out of practice. Okay, check it out. So, technique number one, trolling with nothing more than a 12 inch VIP line lock dropper, five and a half feet of 25 pound mono, two number three out hooks spaced three and a half inches apart, and a piece of meat, a herring, that's it simple easy i troll like that all the time it blows people's mind they get in the boat and they're like water dirty it's moving and they go all you have on there is a piece of meat that's all i do that's that's presentation number one for me that's my go-to that's how i know those fish are are fresh okay when you see when you're seeing fish being caught this is how i know when to use this when fish are being caught and you're not marking them on the graph that's this is what that tells me is that those fish are so bellied down into the sand or gravel, your transducer cannot mark all the way around there because literally there's no space between them and the bottom. They're pressed all the way down, so you can't mark them. So you're going, I'm not even marking fish, but people are catching fish, okay? Dumb it down a little bit, take some gear off, give them a piece of meat. That's number one for me. Now, as soon as I see those fish come up off the bottom uh, and I see a little bit of space in there, that tells me they relax a little bit. They're going to start acting like fish a little bit more. They're not going to be so uh, reserved. Remember, these spring Chinook, all they're doing is saving energy. They spawn in the fall. They have to live all summer long with the fat content they have. So moving quickly or just moving in general is not something that they're super jacked to do, especially when it's really cold like that. So... When I see those fish come up off the bottom, I see the separation between the arches and the bottom. I do this, and I do this way too often. I literally take my scissors, snip that off, and tie on one of my go-to Springer colors for Spring Chinook. Three favorite colors for Springer. Very simple. Blue tip rainbow, Mexican hat, and straight gold. Those are the three I use. I use a purple tip rainbow every now and again, but these three are definitely my go-to colors, okay? A little tip about, <clears throat> excuse me, a little tip about trolling springers. <coughs> Holy cow. But a little tip about it. When you're trolling springers with a spinner, you have to pick up that speed. You got to get your boat speed going a little bit faster. Reason is, when you're coming downhill on those fish, if you're going too slow, keep in mind how fast that river is pushing behind everything. This is a weightless spinner, so it's going to want to push on it. So set it down in the water, get your boat speed going, make sure that everything is stretched out properly and not sagging and make sure that that spinner's turning. That's how you know how fast you need to be going. Guys, once they're off the bottom and ready to relax, they will bite a spinner. I don't care, the, the water temperature doesn't mean really a lot to me. I've caught them in 44 degree water with spinners and a lot of them, okay? Another point or another tip when you're using spinners, your 12 inch dropper, okay? This 12 inch dropper, I wanna use an ample amount of lead. Something to keep in mind, the less lead you use, the less scope you're gonna have in your line before you find the bottom of the river. The more weight you have, the larger separation you're gonna have between the two lines, therefore a larger angle, 
this presentation when your weight is on the bottom or close to the bottom is much more accurate opposed to now you're skipping along the bottom because you have too little lead. I fish all the way up to 12 ounces when I'm trolling for these springers, even in 15 feet of water. So don't be afraid to use too much lead. There's no such thing. Um, again, even 15 feet of water when there's no drag, all you have is a piece of meat or a spinner back there. Don't be afraid to use heavier lead. You're going to be better off. Okay, that's those two techniques. The last one is probably the most popular. And this is with absolutely everything. The whole kitchen sink. Okay. Come down, we're gonna start with our line lock. Difference between this line lock and the other is our 12 inch comes with the 80 pound crimped dropper on there. If you troll in an area where you get weight hung up, that's not the dropper for you. This is just our regular line lock and then I tie a 12 inch section of line, usually with a crappy knot or a lighter line. This is a 20 pound test line here um, with a crappy knot at the bottom. Six bead chain swivel, come to one of our 14 inch pre-tied bumpers, triangle flasher, and then five to five and a half feet a liter down to your three out or two out hooks, whatever you prefer there um, for your herring. Those are my three favorite setups, okay? Things you're gonna wanna focus on when using those and make sure you adjust your speed based on the technique you're using. More gear you have back there, whether it be a flasher, whether it be a spinner, you gotta be moving fast enough. I would say the most forgiving and the most, uh, yeah, just most forgiving presentation is literally gonna be six foot leader, two hooks, a piece of meat, 12 inch dropper on there and call it a day. Because no matter what, whether you're going a little bit too fast, a little bit too slow, there's a piece of meat down there kind of doing its thing, right? So those are my three favorite techniques that I use when I'm trolling for these early season spring Chinook on the Columbia River. Hope it helps, guys. Make sure you leave any comments you have down there, any questions I should say you have down in the comments. Um, and hey, we're here to help. Have a great 2021 season. I'm looking forward to killing some of those Columbia River spring Chinook. Hope you are too. See you soon.